Hi, I'm Victor Ying, and I'm presenting T4, Compiling Sequential Code for Effective Speculative Parallelization in Hardware. This work was done at MIT in collaboration with my advisor, Professor Daniel Sanchez, and my colleague, Mark Jeffrey, who will start as a professor at the University of Toronto this fall. We've all had multi-core machines for years, but most programmers struggle to use multi-core parallelism. Programmers find it much easier to write sequential programs, which are hard to parallelize in general due to data-dependent behavior that prevents compilers from knowing what code is safe to run in parallel. To bridge the gap between sequential programs and parallel hardware, we build on recent work in speculative parallelization, which uses new architectural and compiler techniques to parallelize sequential code without knowing in advance what code is safe to run in parallel. We introduced T4, an open source compiler that exploits recently proposed hardware features to achieve effective speculative parallelization. T4 breaks sequential code into trees of tiny timestamp tasks. T4 assigns each task a timestamp to encode sequential program order. Hardware enforces the timestamp order while allowing tasks to be spawned and run out of order. Each task may spawn multiple children out of order, forming a tree of tasks whose branches unfold in parallel for high throughput task spawn. T4 introduces novel compiler optimizations to make these parallel task spawns highly efficient. As a result of these efficient parallel spawns, we can parallelize tasks as tiny as tens of instructions. This fine-grained parallelization creates new opportunities. For example, having tasks that touch as little as one memory location creates opportunities for T4 to schedule these tiny tasks to exploit locality. We evaluate T4 by parallelizing C and C++ benchmarks from Spec CPU 2006. By spawning many tiny tasks, T4 imposes modest overheads to scale these real-world programs to tens of cores, achieving up to 49x better performance than serial code on 64 cores. Before I tell you more about T4, let me quickly give some background on prior work in speculative parallelization. We have now seen a quarter century of work on speculative parallelization, which has often been called thread level speculation, or TLS for short. The many groups who have worked on TLS have explored diverse architectures and implementations, but they all revolve around dividing the execution of a program into units of work that we will call tasks. These may be the iterations of a loop or calls to functions. A TLS system executes some of these tasks speculatively and in parallel, without knowing in advance if it's safe to do so. The system must therefore use some mechanism to detect dependencies that it has violated and then recover from them with some performance penalty. Unfortunately, as we will see, prior work in TLS performed well in narrow circumstances where dependencies are rare and could not scale beyond a few cores given real world applications with more frequent dependencies. This is due to the expensive aborts they perform to recover from speculation and serializing bottlenecks in their task spawn or commit mechanisms. Now, let me explain this using a simple example. Let's look at how TLS could parallelize the code shown here, which computes a maximal independent set of a graph. Each iteration of the outer loop of this graph algorithm, highlighted in blue, reads and possibly updates the state of a vertex. Notice that the nested inner loop may iterate through neighboring vertices and use indirect memory references to update states of these neighbors, highlighted here in orange. We shall consider parallelizing the iterations of the outer loop, so each outer loop iteration is a task. Here, task A will run the first iteration of the loop, but it first spawns task B, which is responsible for running the second iteration of the loop, and so on. Notice that no more than one task is being spawned at a time. This serial manner of task spawns was a common feature in prior TLS systems, where the order in which tasks were spawned and began execution was coupled to the order in the original sequential program. Now, notice that some tasks do manage to run in parallel, such as tasks C and D, but these tasks do not necessarily perform independent computations. Hardware must track memory accesses to discover data dependencies at runtime. For example, task D may read from a location in memory that is later written by task C. This violates a dependence on data through memory. To recover, task D must abort and re-execute. When aborting task D, we undo all its effects, including aborting other tasks that D spawned or passed data to, such as tasks E and F. In general, prior TLS architectures recover from this speculation by conservatively aborting and re-executing all later tasks across the system, which may often bring a significant fraction of the system to a halt. In this example, after D aborts, 
all tasks D, E, and F are re-executed as tasks D prime, E prime, and F prime. Thus, a single abort results in unselectively aborting a large number of other tasks, even if those other, other tasks, such as E and F, may have actually been performing independent work. To address this problem, we build on the hardware mechanisms recently proposed in the Swarm architecture. Swarm hardware exposes a task-based execution model. Swarm programs are broken into tasks, and each task must be tagged with a timestamp when it is spawned. Tasks can spawn children tasks with timestamp greater than or equal to their own. Hardware guarantees that tasks appear to execute sequentially in timestamp order. To exploit parallelism, Swarm executes many tasks speculatively and out of order on many cores. It uses distributed mechanisms to detect order violations and recovers by selectively aborting single tasks and only the tasks that were dependent on other aborted tasks. Swarm requires modest changes to a standard shared memory multi-core chip. Specifically, Swarm adds task queuing units distributed throughout the chip so that each core can execute and spawn tasks by communicating cheaply with its nearest task unit. These task units autonomously distribute tasks across the system and allow for hundreds of tiny speculative tasks to run in parallel. Swarm has previously been used for manual parallelization of graph kernels, but in order to allow parallelization of entire programs, it needs a compiler to automate the transformation of sequential code to run in parallel on Swarm. Now, note that when a task aborts, Swarm still aborts all of the task's children, which are dependent tasks. So to exploit Swarm's selective aborts, we cannot construct long chains of tasks as was done by prior TLS compilers. Now let's see how the T4 compiler leverages Swarm's hardware features to improve over prior TLS work. In T4, we introduce a simple solution to the problem of that aborting tasks must also abort their children. We implement a compiler transformation that splits the work of executing loop iterations into worker tasks, separate from spawner tasks whose only job is to spawn other tasks. Now the majority of computation time is in the leaves of the task tree, so task D can abort and re-execute cheaply without affecting the execution of the separately spawned tasks E and F. Simply switching from task chains to using decoupled spawners in this way improves the parallel speedup of this example program from five to eight times on a 64 core system. But with 64 cores, we can do a lot better. So far, we've only considered parallelizing the outer loop. So consider what happens in this scenario if indirect writes in the inner loop sometimes write to the same location. This could cause an abort, and in, then we must abort and re-execute an entire outer loop iteration task. To reduce the cost of aborts due to these contentious indirect memory accesses, we can isolate them into tiny tasks. To do this, we can exploit Swarm's support for nested task spawns to paralyze both the outer loop and the inner loop, thus breaking down the computation into tiny tasks that are cheap to abort and re-execute. This approach does improve performance a little, but the improvement is limited when tasks are spawned in this fashion. This is because the tasks are as short as a few instructions, and the critical path becomes dominated by task spawn overheads in the nested chains of spawner tasks. To address this problem, we can transform the spawners from a serial chain into a balanced tree for each loop, where each spawner recursively divides the range of loop iterations among its children. This asymptotically increases parallelism and enables scalability even with tiny worker tasks by paralyzing the spawning of tasks. Now we can effectively parallelize this simple toy program, achieving over 25x speedup. But parallelizing entire real-world programs requires robust handling of more complex nested code patterns. So now let me tell you how T4 extracts parallelism across large programs. T4 performs whole program parallelization, dividing the entire execution of sequential programs into tasks, starting from the first instruction of main. T4 automatically builds nested task trees by dividing all loop iterations, function calls, and their continuations into tasks. T4's techniques can extract parallelism in a composable way, even in the presence of loops whose trip count is unknown, opaque function calls, data-dependent control flow, and pointer manipulation. These common code features defeat standard compiler analyses. To generate balanced spawner trees for arbitrary loops, for example, T4 uses a new technique called progressive expansion, which does not rely on static analyses to determine the loop's trip count. 
which is the number of iterations in the loop. For example, consider this while loop containing a break statement. It is impossible to know how many iterations it will run before it terminates. To parallelize this loop, T4 generates a progressively expanding tree of speculative spawners in gray, with each spawner spawning a few workers in blue to run iterations of the loop. To handle the control dependence of each loop iteration on previous iterations, T4 reuses Swarm's mechanisms for data dependent speculation to perform control speculation. To do this, T4 transforms the code as shown in this pseudocode to use a new variable that is named done. T4 then transforms each task's code to start by checking the variable to see whether to exit without doing anything. It also modifies any control flow path that would exit from the loop to set the done variable. These tasks can then be run speculatively in parallel. Whenever some iteration of the loop finally writes to the done variable, this quickly aborts any later iterations that should not have run. Progressive expansion thus enables high scalability for loops that might terminate on any iteration. Note that while I'm showing only one ta task per loop iteration in blue, the call to the function foo inside the loop body could generate nested parallel tasks within each iteration. So now let's talk about how T4 allows nested function calls to be spawned in parallel. Consider this loop where each iteration in blue calls a function f whose return value determines whether or not to call another function g in yellow. Ideally, we'd like to spawn all calls of f in parallel, and then when f returns, to spawn tasks to call g only if needed. Conventionally, dynamic function calls require allocating stack frames, and allocating frames on a shared call stack would serialize these tasks. To address this, T4 transforms function calls that need return values into continuation passing style and allocates continuation closures on the heap when needed. These heap chunks can be allocated and consumed without serialization. T4 includes further optimizations detailed in the paper to ensure that most task spawns do not require any memory allocation at all. These compiler transformations are safe for general sequential code and do not rely on any special hardware features, so they could be applied to other systems for speculative parallelization. T4's tiny tasks create further opportunities to improve scalability. For example, typical sequential programs feature a lot of locality, and effective parallelization requires respecting the locality of frequently updated data. This is easy to do with tiny tasks that might only write to a single memory location. T4 can generate code in a parent task to compute the address that a child will write to, and we call this address a spatial hint. Swarm hardware can schedule tasks with spatial hints to improve locality. For example, tasks A and B may be running in parallel on different tiles, and each may need to spawn a child that will write to some memory address. Swarm hardware can map this address to a tile and then send the child tasks with matching spatial hints to execute on this tile, avoiding ping-ponging the cache line when these children tasks C1 and C2 write to the same address. But this is only possible for tiny tasks that avoid writing to many memory locations. To get these tiny tasks, so far we've said that T4 automatically splits loop iterations and function calls into tasks, but sometimes those tasks are still too large. In some applications, we find it profitable to further split straight line code into tinier tasks. T4 allows the programmer to annotate the code to suggest additional task boundaries. Note that these annotations have no effects and convey no information about program behavior. So it's always safe for a programmer to try inserting them anywhere and keep whatever performs the best. This table shows that we modified less than 0.1% of the code in our applications, showing that T4 paralyzes the vast majority of code automatically. We expect that future work can use heuristics to fully automate the placement of task boundaries. We implement T4 by modifying the popular LLVM Clang compiler toolchain. Specifically, we add new transform passes to the LLVM backend. All our new passes are intra-procedural, that is, they act on one function at a time without requiring information on other functions. Thus, compile times stay proportional to code size. T4 is still able to benefit from all the standard optimizations in LLVM, resulting in high quality code generation. The paper has more implementation details, such as how T4 generates timestamps using topological sorting, 
how T4 bundles stack allocations into heap allocations and performs privatization, and how T4 reduces false sharing using loop task coarsening. The paper also presents case studies to detail how we break applications into tasks and sensitivity studies to show the importance of T4's features. Now let me show you how well T4 per performs. We evaluate T4 using cycle level simulation of systems of up to 64 superscalar out of order cores. These event driven simulations include detailed modeling of an on chip network and a three level cache hierarchy. Hardware task units can hold tens of speculative tasks per core, which add up to many hundreds of tasks across the 64 core chip. We evaluate T4 on C and C++ benchmarks from Spec CPU 2006, which prior work found difficult to paralyze. The results I will show depict the performance of T4 relative to running serial code compiled with Clang-03 on the same hardware. We find that scalability varies widely across applications, so we plot these applications in two groups with different y-axis scales. On the left, we have applications whose hot inner loops have at least some iterations that are independent. T4 uncovers significant parallelism here, scaling some benchmarks linearly, so that LVM, for example, achieves 49 times speed up on 64 cores. Perhaps even more significant, T4 achieves 7x and 5x speed up on Soplex and ASTAR, respectively. These are applications with frequent dependencies where prior work struggled to even achieve 2x speed up. On the right, we see that T4 finds more limited parallelism in some benchmarks whose hottest inner loops update a single, single scalar variable on every iteration. T4 can isolate the updates to these shared variables into tiny tasks while extracting parallelism from any other available computation. Now, to present an alternate view of the data, this plot shows execution time, so lower is better. Here, again, we compare the original serial code compiled with dash 03, which are the light green bars, with the dark green bars, which show the, the execution time of parallelized code generated by T4 when that code is forced to run on a single core. Compared with prior work, T4's task spawns add relatively low overheads, 31% on average, despite our, our tiny tasks. This is due to our efforts to ensure T4's parallelization passes do not impede ordinary compiler optimizations. Now we add the execution time of T4 parallelized code on four cores. T4's parallelization more than makes up for its overheads, significantly cutting execution times on almost all benchmarks. Within each bar, I've also broken down execution time to show how core spend time averaged across the four cores. Notice that T4 parallelized code spends most of its time executing useful work in tasks that commit. This stands in contrast to prior work, where inefficient task spawn or commit mechanisms meant tasks spent more time, uh, core spent more time idle waiting for tasks, or expensive mass aborts took up more of execution time. We can further look at execution time breakdowns at 16 and then 64 cores and see that in most benchmarks, performance continues to improve. This shows that T4 can make effective use of tens of cores. To sum up, T4 addresses the need for parallelization of sequential programs so that programmers can more easily make use of their multi-core systems. We have shown that T4 can scale difficult programs to tens of cores by exploiting the features of the recently proposed Swarm architecture. Thus, T4 broadens the range of applications where speculative parallelization is effective. We've evaluated T4 on challenging C and C++ benchmarks where it yielded speedups of up to 49 times on 64 cores. T4 introduced and automated novel code transformations. T4 generates spawners that are decoupled from leaf tasks that perform the work of the application, enabling cheap aborts of tiny leaf tasks. T4's progressive expansion generates balanced spawner trees to uncover asymptotically more parallelism than prior work for unknown trip count loops. T4 also reduces false sharing using multiple techniques, including eliminating the call stack and coarsening loop tasks, and optimizes task spawns for high efficiency. If you're interested in learning more, please come to the live online Q&A session on Monday, June 1st or visit our website at swarm.csale.mit.edu, where the code for T4 is publicly available for you to experiment with and build on.